Kami Harris, eugenics, Bill Clinton. Stop it. Biomedical experimentation. All connected. I, I don't want to be here today. <laughs> I, I don't want to be here today. None of that. And then I don't want any of that. All I, right. I just well, want to drink my beer and sing my songs. It's beer and songs <laughs> Wednesday. It is. Which means, uh, thank you for joining us. Where's the song? It just, it's, oh, well, I He's turned out there. There we go. At least, at least it's good. At least while we're oh, getting thank going. You. I was going to do it with my It's just ring. right under the table. Okay. I got a magnet for okay. it. Okay. Oh, okay. look at that. Look at how we do it. Song 100. Amen. This is a... Uh, Cheers, Cheers to the king. Cheers, Cheers to the king. This is the Brother Down version. Cheers. It's a great version. Brother Down. You can find them on Spotify. Yes, you can. Uh, iTunes and all the, all, the, all the good places. All the places. Yeah. All right. But we'll save that for later. So, Kami Harris was on... Oh, welcome to Cross Politics. Pastor Toby Chuck Knox on the water boy. <laughs> Kami Harris... <laughs> Was on Meet the Press on Sunday night, and it, and it's it still blows my mind when they talk like this about abortion. We have some polling that shows confidence in the Supreme Court is at its lowest level that we've measured in over twenty years. Um, how much confidence do you have in the Supreme Court? I think this is an activist court. Oh. What does that mean? It, it didn't rule the way I wanted to rule. That we had. An established right for almost half a century, which is the right of women to make decisions about their own body as an extension of what we have decided to be the privacy rights to which all people are entitled. And this court took that constitutional right away. And we are suffering as a nation because of it. That causes me great concern. Uh, we're, um, we're, we are we are we're suffering. Suffering. Oh. suffering. Did you did you know that? Oh, oh man. Oh. Uh, so uh. first of all, you know, you remember there used to be some sort of kind of decorum or some kind of deference and respect between the different branches. Yeah. Judicial branch, the executive <laughs> branch, the legislative branch. It, that is, I mean, the way they talk about the Supreme Court right now, you know, it's an activist court. It's a you know kind of thing. They're, it seems like we've just kind of lost in the, this this um, statesman respect for each uh, branch. But notice too, though, it's okay to it's not okay to talk about the election. Yeah. But it is okay to yeah. bring doubt yeah. on the courts. The yeah. very thing that holds yeah. all this in the elections, yeah. you can't yeah. talk yeah. about that That's when you have a hearing, right? That's very sacred. Mm-hmm. But the court, yeah. we might probably need to stack it. And, and <laughs> that's right. right, right yeah. Right. And remember, there was never a constitutional right to an abortion. She says there's a constitutional right. right. We t- they right. took the courts take away our constitutional no. right. There yeah. never was. Where, where's that? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it's, it's very funny that she says that, you know, uh, I always think when you say activist court, they actually are saying they got it wrong. They said, no, no, no. We understand. We ruled on this wrong. And here goes the history that we, right. Right. we ruled wrong on this. And so right. we're actually right. making it right. Yeah. Right. And because we ruled wrong, you're going to say we're being, act- no, we're fixing what was broken. That, and so when were they being activists? When they ruled wrong the first time? Yeah. Was that because those were all Republicans. Something was wrong there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. But I think the thing that really gets me is the fact that when she talks about the 14th Amendment, that, oh, yeah, this is a right to privacy. When we had Jeff Schaefer on, he was talking about this and blew my mind. There isn't really a constitutional right to privacy. There is obviously no such thing in the Constitution as a right to privacy. However, the court determined that because certain elements of the, the Bill of Rights speak in terms of what would arguably could be characterized as privacy. No illegal search and seizures. Exactly. Okay. No housing of forced housing of soldiers in your home. Right. right? Yeah. This kind yeah. of thing. Okay. It's describing the yep. Bill of Rights almost as a moon that's giving off of light and and the shadow that runs around the exterior of right. the moon's light is where we're finding these right. rights and <laughs> privacy, which included in so the nineteen sixty five Griswold case a right to marital immunity against the laws um, against uh, contraception. Man, that seems like a great show. Yeah, I'd watch, <laughs> I, I'd watch that show, especially if that guy's on there. Yeah, right? <laughs> Every time. So all the justification that we yeah. have done in our land regarding Privacy. Uh, LGBT, marriage, abortion, contraception, divorce, contraception the right all to stuff. fruitless sex. We got to remember right, right, that. Fruitless sex. It's all been anchored on this right to privacy that Jeff Schaefer says right. you can't find in right. the Constitution. Right. It's, which, which again, the particular ones, and you noted them in there, was the the right to not have soldiers, uh, yeah. you know, uh, forced upon in you, your house, in your house, 
and and no unlawful searches and seizures yeah. like the FBI did in Mar-a-Lago. That's right. right. Uh, I mean, that's that's what that's all you've got there. Yeah. Right. That, mm-hmm. that, there's nothing. There's nothing about the right to choose to abort your baby. Yeah. The and right the, to privately kill a human. Right. So Kama Harris actually goes on. You Who? mentioned Kami. Kami. I can't. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's how I say her name. It's Kami. It okay. just comes out Kami Harris. Yeah, right. Kami Harris. <laughs> Anyways, um, she actually goes on. You mentioned that she references the 14th Amendment, but listen to her talk about abortion a little more in this Meet the Press video. Do you believe their government should put any limit on abortion? I believe government should not be telling women what to do with their bodies. Oh. I believe government should not be telling women how to plan their families. I believe government should not be criminalizing health care providers. I believe government should not be saying no exception for rape or incest as a prosecutor, former prosecutor who specialized in child sexual assault cases, understanding the violence that occurs against women and children, and then to further subject them to those kind of inhumane conditions. By killing the baby. (laughs) That's what I believe. (laughs) That's what I believe. Being pregnant is an inhumane condition? Don't want to be pregnant. If you're raped, if you don't want the baby, it's actually it, not even if you're raped. It's, it is if you just don't want the baby at all. I don't like the fact that everybody is having a conversation conversation on some of the exceptions, and these aren't really valid yeah. exceptions oh, anyway. No. But notice how that the majority of abortions, all abortions, are have nothing to do with this topic. That this is it's such a tiny, a, a, a tiny point something percentage yep. of yep. the of the conversation. But the liberals and know how to win arguments, and they are taking this right. to make yep. it an emotional argument. Yep. So that say, well, if you do it, what you're talking about, then these people, what do they do? We, we that's not how we make law. We always are able to understand the situation. But in this particular case, we want to say, well, what about the person who's inside? Right. What that person yep. has rights too. Right. And they deny all those rights. And when you start doing that, then there's a slippery slope. You start stop looking at anybody as being a human being after a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and remember the Democrats are actually freeing rapists out of jails right now. <laughs> remember during COVID, <laughs> oh, don't Canada was releasing COVID. a rapist, a child predator, right. Right. while James Coates was going into prison. Right. Speaking of telling you know. women what to do with their body, I thought they wanted those women to get vaccinated or they were going to lose That's their right. jobs. That's right. Uh, weren't they telling women mm, yeah. what to do with their body then right. and a whole lot of other people what, what to do I with their do body? With my family. Yeah. Hey, we're on a mission to make magazines great again, so subscribe to our Fight, Laugh, Feast magazine. This is a quarterly mini-book-like experience, packed full of a variety of authors that includes theologically driven cultural commentary, a psalm of the quarter, recipes for feasting, laughter sprinkled throughout the glossy pages, and more. Sign your church up, sign your grumpy uncle up, and while you're at it, sign up the Pope, Elon Musk's, (laughs) all three of them, and Russell, we can't spell your name more. Hey, take that! Take that, James White! (laughs) <laughs> Disclaimer, this magazine will guarantee various responses and cross politic is not held liable for any of them. Reading the whole magazine may cause theological maturation, possibly encourage your kids to take the Lord's Supper with you, and will likely cause you to randomly chuckle and enjoy God's wondrous world. Sign up today for issues for $60 per year. That's it. Go to fightlaughfeast.com right now to sign up. Our next magazine is Post Mill Christmas. Post mill ah, Christmas. Mill. Everybody's, Christmas. Everybody's, everybody's yeah. post mill yeah. at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, post mill Christmas. Also want to give a shout out to Christ Covenant Church, CREC, uh, having a service at the Fredonia Grange at 3 p.m. on Sundays in Mount Vernon, Washington. Visit okay. the website christ church <laughs> for more details. You can also contact Pastor Michael K- I think it's Kloss. Kloss. We don't know how to spell anything on yep. this prompter. At Pastor at RedeemerLinwood.com if you're interested. So I was, um, after watching this Meet the Press, uh, it, when I was, I was on Twitter, and this Bill Clinton, uh, old Bill Clinton video came up okay. um, when he was president. And he was going through and talking about it. It was really interesting. He was talking friends about Friends don't his, let friends watch old Bill Clinton videos. Mm. How the government was basically doing biomedical experiments mm. on its people. And Bill Clinton was basically acknowledging this and asking for forgiveness for it. Listen to this. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place Thousands. at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. The goal was to understand the effects of radiation exposure on the human body. While most of the tests were ethical by any standards, some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards 
of the time in which they were conducted. <laughs> they fail both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. In one experience, scientist experiment, scientists injected plutonium into 18 patients without their knowledge. Wow. In another, doctors exposed indigent cancer patients to excessive doses of radiation, a treatment from which it is virtually impossible that they could ever benefit. Mm. The report also demonstrates that these and other experiments were carried out on precisely those citizens who count most on the government for its help, mm. the destitute Minorities. and the gravely ill. But the dispossessed were not alone. Members of the military, precisely those on whom we and our government count most, they were also test subjects. Informed consent means your doctor tells you the risk of the treatment you are about to undergo. Not anymore. <laughs> In too nope. many cases, informed consent was withheld. Americans were kept in the dark about the effects of what was being done to them. The deception extended beyond the test subjects themselves to encompass their families and the American people as a whole. For these experiments were kept secret, and they were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security, but for the simple fear of embarrassment. And that was wrong. Mm. You know, this this feels like... Man, I want to vote for Bill Clinton. <laughs> That's what I, You know, Pastor, it's funny what I was going to say. <laughs> I think Bill Clinton is the better conservative than most of the guys we have. And unfortunately, it seems mm -hmm. like... My goodness. That's messed up. You uh. know, as I was listening to this, I was like, this is what it's going to be like 30 years from now when they talk about COVID. I hope it's by 30 years. Not yeah. even, I hope it's less than that. Yeah. I hope it's less than that, too. But right. I don't know. There's a lot that's going on in this right. moment. Right. You know, um, so this it's kind of messed up. One of the things that's happened is that we've kind of forgotten that the culture of eugenics. This is, He's talking about the Manhattan Project. Right. And uh, these are doctors from the Manhattan Project. I think the Manhattan Project was 1939 up well, to 1940. the threat of nuclear War right. That's, so they were making missiles and bombs mm -hmm. and all kinds of military mm -hmm. stuff, but then they were also experimenting on humans. And part of what the plutonium was doing was to try and figure out how much we could work around it um, and not be damaged. Mm -hmm. And so there was one guy they injected with plutonium in his in his calf, and he, they cut his calf off two days later. Yeah, and I mean, the, guy, just, the guy didn't he didn't, he didn't know that they were participating. This. What, he didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the healthy goodness. people that they were just right. doing this. To. And so the reason that this was brought up is because there's this new. Um, executive order that was signed by our president September 12th. That's Monday. That was just this past week. Danae Rancourt, who we had on the show, was one of the first few people who were talking about all death mor mortality rate as, as related to COVID, right. who was ahead of the curve on this. And he's in Canada yeah. watching what our executive orders are, are handing down. Yeah. And in this executive order is basically a bioeconomy executive order that should strike fear in all of us. Um, Pastor, you have actually the document, but there's two things I think we need to pay attention to what they intend to do and why they're doing it. And then the database that comes from it. Right. This this uh, section one says that um, the administration is going to coordinate a whole government approach to advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing towards innovative solutions in health, climate change, energy, food security, agriculture, supply chain, resilience and national and economic security. and Fix, give chocolate milk to everyone. Oh, well. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Every, sure. like, biomedical yeah. chocolate yeah. milk. No one will die ever again. That's oh, well, what it says. It's not used it. by real milk. It's <laughs> biomedical milk with chocolate in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe Dave Rubin can share some of it. Oh, Bio no! Biotechnology harnesses the power of biology to create new services and products which provide opportunities to grow the United States economy and workforce, improve the quality of lives and environment. The economic activity derived from biotechnology and biomanufacturing is referred to as the bioeconomy. Now, here's the crazy Boo. stuff. Here, here, here's the part that everybody, listen, this, this is. No one's talking about this. Freak. No one's talking about this executive order. Do, it's have, crazy to do me. Do you have like freak out music? Because uh, yeah. this is yeah. the part where we need freak out music. No. But... Okay. <laughs> For biotechnology and biomanufacturing to help us achieve our societal goals. Okay. Wh okay. What are, where are those at? I thought we had a constitution. What societal goals are they talking about? Right. Um, just trust the experts. Yeah. The United States needs to invest in foundational scientific capabilities. We need to develop genetic engineering technologies and techniques to be able to write circuitry for cells. Did you hear that? 
We're going to we're going to write cells. circuitry for cells and predictably program biology. It's called the mnra vaccine. In the, well, that's yeah, part that's, of it. <laughs> in the same way in which we write software and program computers, they're not, they're, they're, it's, right it's right there. Right the, like, we just had they, they just said it out loud. Yeah, yeah. we and just had Davis Yance on yesterday right, talking yeah, about right. all the military yeah. and the military they're using for this right now. They want to write the circuitry for cells and program biology in the same way they write software and program computers. Unlock the power of biological data. This is your DNA. This is your RNA. DNA, including through computing tools and artificial intelligence and advance the science of scale up production while reducing the obstacles for commercialization so that innovative technologies and products can reach markets faster. faster. That last line faster. All of that whole paragraph is scary, but particularly that last line, because that removes the checks and balances. Okay. Because yeah. to get to market faster, we can't have all these no. things in but the no, way. No, you want to make it hard for a small business to start up, but we want make to make it, it faster for, for yeah, the market. For eugenics. To get for the eugen- I mean, this is like classic mad scientist talk. So remember. We're going to take over the world. We're going to run everything. We're going to fix everything. Pinky in the brain. Absolutely. So remember <laughs> when the Dave Rubin and Jordan Peterson conversation happened? Yeah. I didn't see a lot of people really hit the eugenics thing. And it's because we are numb to the yeah. eugenic situation. Yeah, we don't see we it. We don't see it. And I think a lot of people, Pastor, just heard you read that and was like, it sounds pretty cool if I could just dial up this thing and I can yeah, fix my genes. Fix, fix my yeah. genes and all sorts of other stuff. And I think it's because we are in this culture and in this world where um, transhumanism is, norma- is normal. Yeah. So we have apps that we can pull up for fun. I think it's a training process mm-hmm. to get us to see, oh, this is what it looks like if you look were a woman. This is what you would look like. This is what it would look like if you were a man. Right. Oh, this is what it would look like if you didn't have the eye. You wanted to be black. Oh, I you like could be the black. That gets you wanted to be white. Gets rid of my belly. Be, uh, yeah. rid of my belly. You, I appreciate you, you want that. A big uh, that's butt. <laughs> you can have a big butt. You want right. a small waist? Yeah, you can right. have a small. Yeah. What what kind of person do you right. want to make? Right. Right. Because you can make that kind of Mr. person. Mr. Potato Head. And right. so right now they have us making this type of person online. Right. So that we, because we get comfortable how other people see our presentation of us and not really us. And so now it's like, oh, what if you can have the real you, right. the one that you have in here? Right. It's not just online anymore. Right. And that's, what, that's what they're but, offering. But that's, I what think that's what they're offering. I think tracing this is abortions here. Eugenics is behind abortion. Right? Yeah. Right. You're right. And then behind that's evolution. Right. Yes. Like so, right. it's like our worldview is driving all the way right. out to now biomedical, right. you know, this manufacturing. Is, this is exactly what we talked with um, David uh, Limbaugh about yesterday yeah. on the show, which is which is again, it's, it's Darwinism, but it's Darwinism with a twist because, and it really is Darwinism and Marxism kind of married. Yeah. Because it has the same might makes right, survival of the fittest, right. and sort of this we can bring beauty and glory and strength out of chaos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it has this. Market side, uh-huh, uh-huh. and we can run it yeah. side. This kind of this arrogant hubris that says um, we have evolved to the point where where we can now control the evolutionary process. Yeah, and so it starts with abortion. Yeah, um, in a which is I mean again back to what Kamala Harris and the whole and the whole left is talking about when they're defending. This is this is them having the right to make their own life. Yeah, the right to make their own family and so forth. And fundamentally, we the, the the Christian response to that is you do not have that right. Yeah, you, this is it's not yours. You are not God. Yeah. That's right. You are not God. And if God has put a life inside of you, you have absolutely no right to take that life. Mm. And 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 if you made choices that got that life there, yeah. Okay, that's you know you need to own that. Yeah. And if in in and if some horrific act happened to you yeah. and a life is now in there nevertheless you are not sovereign you are not god you still report to god god is yeah. over that life just because something tragic right. happens to you doesn't mean you get an escape right from this reality but they you know they reported in iceland you know a few years ago that you know that uh, down syndromes down to like you know 0. 0.00 whatever percent right. and it's because they're all murdered yeah in, I, oh, in Iceland, yeah. they just kill Down syndrome babies. Yeah. But that's eugenics. Right. That's people saying, I know better than God. This person does not deserve to live. The world would be better without them. My life would be better without them. We get to decide the kind of human beings that get to be made. Yes. Now, that's scary. That's eugenics. That's, yeah. And we start, and that's what you're programming initially is they're just killing babies. Yeah. You know, Pastor, I can't, I mean, this is really complicated for me because I don't understand how people, especially, I'm thinking about black people particularly, who are very, very proud of their blackness and proud of black culture. 
then find it in their heart to say, yes, we need less of that by having abortion. Right. right. You know, and so there those two don't right. seem to connect in the same way. But because, I guess because I, there's a difference between there's a difference between recognizing that God is the one who made all of us and made us with all of our glorious diversity. Right. Right. And receiving that gift. Yeah. And then saying, I love my whatever it is, yeah. my blackness, yeah. my whiteness. Right. The what, virtues in the wrong place. And, and then and then I am the God. Yeah. And now that's insanity. And now there's another person trying to get in on this yeah. inside my body or inside my family. Yeah. And and if that gets in the way of what I was making myself to be, yeah. then I will choose to yeah. execute that. Why doesn't something like this go through Congress? How is it that the president of the United States can pull an executive order out to pull off eugenics? Well, for the, and call it bioeconomy. Well, for the same reason, same reason they were able to shut down our economies yeah. and tell everybody to take the jab. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, use peer I mean, pressure on that. We were already getting that. I but mean, this is this is this seems more than a peer pressure. This is yeah. actually opened up a whole. New, right. They're trying to use this to say this is economy booster. Right. And there, it's not going through. Con- how are they going to get the money for this? Where is it going to come right. from? None of that stuff is explained right. in this. Right. It's just going to happen. Right. But everybody needs to understand abortion, transgender surgeries. Yep. Um, all of this stuff is eugenics. Dave Rubin, rent, you know, buying eggs from from catalogs, renting wombs. That's right. Putting breast milk in 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 um, freezers. That's right. Uh, it, this is this is the um, this is a boutique um, <laughs> life. Yeah, yeah. I am sovereign. I am my own God. Yeah. I make myself. And we need to have some sort of immune system to it. And right now, I don't think we do at all. I, I, I can choose if I'm a man. I can be a woman. If I'm a woman, I can be a man. Um, I can cut. I can dice and, and chop and, and make whatever and, I want to uh, on the macro level, all the way down to the cellular level. Yep. I can, I can make human life be whatever I want it to be. That's that's we're in a scary place right now. We are dime payments is a Christian owned processing payment business. Every business needs a payment process system. Go to dimepayments.com slash FLF. That part tells them we sent you and sign your business up. Working with them supports us. They won't cancel you like Stripe canceled president Trump. They won't cancel you like MailChimp canceled the Babylon B. Check them out. At least have a phone call. Tell them that Cross Politics sent you. Go to dimepayments.com/slash FLF. Love those guys. Tell them we sent you. Yeah. He, he said that part. You just want to make sure they heard it. I'm saying that. again. Psalm 100 is the song of the day. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, mm. not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Psalm 100 is a pretty famous psalm. It was it was known, it's been known as Old 100th uh, for many generations. Mm-hmm. It was such a well-loved tune that it's been continued down to the present as our common doxology mm-hmm. uh, tune. And we love singing this at the Fight, Laugh, Feast conference. Yes. By the way, we have beer and psalms on the first night where we sing through a bunch of psalms and hymns together. But Aaron Snell leads singing throughout the whole conference. Yep. Yes. Um, we usually do a couple of songs before each talk. And many folks tell us that the singing is the highlight of the conference for them. And while this hurts some of our speakers' feelings a little bit, <laughs> we don't really care. Many folks say they have they take the songs back home and begin teaching their home groups and small yep. groups and churches. So sign up for the Fight Life East conference and come sing psalms with us like this one. Uh, and don't forget that we just opened a special Saturday-only registration for $99. Yes. So if you just couldn't figure out how to swing the whole conference, maybe this is for you. $99 gets you all of Saturday, three talks and a live show and our family-style Sabbath dinner. So go check it out. And Sign stand-up up comedian, right? Stand-up comedian. That's right. Yeah, John Brandon and crew. The main thing I want to point out about Psalm 100 today is the center of the psalm. This is a psalm of praise and a call to worship God. But the center of the psalm is verse 3. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is mm. he who hath made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He is God. He made us. We did not make ourselves. What a psalm for our day. Man. Uh, yeah. I mean. And ma- for this show. Yeah, right. Yeah. Seriously. But I mean, maybe that's something you, you've been tempted to think, you know, is not really necessary to say. Like, yeah, of course God made us. But look around you. We live in a culture of desperate, anxious, despairing people that are frantically trying to make themselves. Mm. Yeah. Uh, And and it really goes both ways. We have people who really don't know God, and therefore the only alternative is to try to make yourself. If God didn't make you, who will? Who will look out for you? You have to make yourself. The flip side is there are piles and piles of professing Christians who say that the Lord is God, 
And they too have been sucked into the desperate anxiety and they're rushing around trying to make themselves as well. Mm. Christians are the problem just as much as the pagans. Some people are trying to make themselves through physical fitness and diet fads, through sex and beauty and fashion. Mm. Now people are trying to make themselves through sexual identity, through sexual orientation, through eugenics, through trans surgeries and chemicals. But all of this is slavery. And really, it's utterly impossible. Yeah. You can't be God. And, and, like, and don't forget this. And when you try to be God, you suck at being God. Yeah. Preach, preach. Right? You yeah. ju- all you do is destroy people. All you mm-hmm. do is harm people. All you do is maim people. You, you pump them full of plutonium and their leg gets Ugh. chopped yeah. off two, da- two days. And then 30 years later, the president's apologizing. Mm-mm. It's such good news to hear the message of Psalm 100. The Lord is God. You are not God. The Lord is God. We did not make ourselves. He made us. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Of course, this reminds us of Jesus, the good shepherd, who gave his life for his sheep so that he might not lose a single one. Jesus made us, and by his blood, he has remade us, and he has given his life for us. And like a good shepherd, he feeds his sheep. In the Old Testament, kings were often called shepherds, and in this way, Jesus is also a faithful king. We live in a land full of worthless rulers, worthless kings, who feed on their people, who Mm -hmm. experiment on their people, (laughs) rather than feeding their people, rather than giving their people life. All of this, the fact that Jesus is a good king who has given his life for his people, should make us want to worship him, to make a joyful noise, to sing out loud, because he is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Mm. Cheers Cheers. to the king! Cheers to the king! Cheers to the king, man. And this is a comfort, whether you're experiencing like a blessed season by God or a trial or right. going through a right. trials. Yeah. God made you. Yeah. He, and he made us for this. And he made us for this moment. He made what, us for this moment. Whether it's for blessing or for challenges. Right. Right. And, and, when, it's, and it's, when it's challenges, like, yeah. you know, it's the Lord is good. That's right. Like, he, that's right. He, he is the good shepherd. Yep. And he leads you where you need to go. And that's why you can count it all joy. Right. I got some questions for backstage. Uh oh. Um, uh oh. I want to talk about why beer and psalms. All right. At the conference, why beer? Oh. Why psalm? Uh oh. And the importance of music. Mm. Mm. Okay. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids? If you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. I just want everybody to know backstage that uh, you skipped a clip and you got out of the order of the actual recording of the the show. No, that's, that's, okay. a, that's not that's not how was I was that had intentional. All, I, I no, I had it mapped out differently than you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, Knox skipped a clip, Hold right, on. Haley? Haley, right, Haley? Was that Knox skipped the clip? Skip, or who okay? skipped the clip? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You're not gonna get fired. <laughs> who skipped the clip? Who was it? The way Knox is going. Ah, okay, all right, all right, all right. What was the, what was the one? It was the, it, we were supposed to play, play the clip we were supposed to play because we were trying to let everybody know we forgot what eugenics was. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Since ancient Greece, there have been efforts to control human populations via reproduction, retaining some traits and removing others. Oh. But in the 19th century, the discovery of evolution and genetics inspired a new scientific movement dedicated to this endeavor. In 1883, British scientist Sir Francis Galton named this idea eugenics, drawing from the Greek word for to be well-born. This wave of modern eugenicists included prominent scientists and progressive reformers who believed they could improve society by ensuring that only desirable traits were passed down. However, their definition of what traits were and were not desirable was largely determined by the prejudices of their era. Entire categories of people were considered unfit for reproduction including immigrants, people of color, and people with disabilities. Meanwhile, their ideal genetic standard reflected the movement's members, white Europeans of Nordic or Anglo-Saxon descent. As the influence of (laughs) eugenics spread in the early 20th century, many countries restricted immigration and outlawed interracial unions. These measures to improve so-called racial hygiene were taken to their horrific conclusion in Nazi Germany. The Nazi eugenics campaign systematically killed millions of Jews, as well as individuals from other groups, including Roma, gay men, 
and people with disabilities. Outside their extreme brutality, however, Nazi eugenic policies reflected similar standards across the globe. Throughout the mid-20th century, many countries enacted eugenics policies, and governments in Sweden, Canada, and Japan forcibly sterilized thousands of individuals. Sterilization was exceptionally common in the U.S. From 1907 to 1979, U.S. policies enforced the sterilization of over 60,000 people, with 32 states passing laws that mandated sterilization for men and women deemed mentally defective. This label was typically applied based on superficial mental health diagnoses and the results of IQ tests, which were linguistically and culturally biased against most immigrant populations. These racist standards were particularly problematic in California. From 1920 to 1945, Latina women were 59% more likely to be sterilized than other women. And the rate of sterilizations in California was incredibly high. Wow. This single state performed over one third of the country's sterilization operations. That's uh, what you missed. Wow. I, I actually forgot about that video. Um, uh, but uh, there's it, the commie so, order that. Did you uh, notice one thing that they said though when they talked about how the out the outworking of eugenics mainly took its place inside of Germany, right? Uh, and Germany, they had the Jews, they had of course blacks, yeah. they had the homosexuals. Yeah. When you look at the current social and justice movement and disabilities, thank you. When you look at the current social justice movement, what is it made up of? Minor majority black folks, huh. homosexuals, and people with disabilities, yeah. right? Uh -huh. That's that's all. Why aren't they the loudest group pushing against something like this coming from the White House? Because pushing against this type of attitude in the culture, and all, that stuff. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. it. Because because it's not about justice. They are. It's about revenge. One of the things that well, it's they all have the power. same worldview. They have the same worldview as Nazi Germany. Well, they have that evolutionary. They become mindset. like their abusers. Yeah. That's exactly where I was about to go, Pastor. The sin is wrapped. The the punishment is wrapped up in the sin itself. They can't see that they will ultimately end up exterminating yeah. themselves. They, be, at they, the be, end. they become like they become <laughs> they, like their abusers. They be, yeah, so their false gods that they're worshiping will kill them. Right. Yeah. Yep. Their false gods right. will kill them. And right. man, if there's ever a time for us to say, "Oh, y'all, please don't go down this way. Please don't go down. Don't do this. This right. is it's already bad that you're in this state, but this next stage, right. the next stage, right. is going to slaughter you in a way that you think you're trying. It's not us. We're not your enemy." Mm -hmm. You're your worst enemy in this process, and this time, right. and it's just amazing that we. Anyway, so I just wanted to let you know you missed that yeah. point. And no, no, I thought it was still good. It's, that we it's should cool. Hit you it. called me out in the club portal. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah okay. I didn't. Cool. You know, yeah. and, and the time I look at the clock, guys. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't understand why you just like not getting along very well anymore. <laughs> I remember the good old days when we used we, to get along really well, and, and now and now we don't get along. We don't get along very well. Well, anymore. you know why? Because we don't sing enough songs. So, yeah. you know, nice journey. <clears throat> one of the some of the people who are good friends of mine. I'm gonna say good Baptist friends of mine who are solid believing Christians. They're not necessarily reformed, but they look at what we're doing with the beer and Psalms. They kind of have a problem with the beer. Mm -hmm. They love the Psalms because yeah. like, it's, all, it's all Bible, but man, why the beer? You know? Yeah. What, what, and the, your answer to that would be? Um, beer is dangerous. And they, we know. And so are Psalms. And the fact that you're not more worried about singing the Psalms <laughs> tells me you don't know your Bible. <laughs> I'm going to tell you who was worried about us singing some Psalms. Our, our, our local government, yeah. they was more worried about yeah. the Psalms, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. <clears throat> no, the, the, I mean, the Psalms, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's like, you know, wouldn't it be great if God gave us a book of songs that he said, these are potent for worship? I mean, wouldn't that be great? It'd be really good. Yeah, I and wish we had one of those. And he did. <laughs> Gave us 150 songs and yeah. said, "Here, you want to know what I love to hear?" Yeah. Um, and if you read, I mean, just if you start singing the psalms, you start praying the psalms. I mean, if if you don't have, you're not used to singing them, and you just all right, well, I just want to learn. Like, start praying them. Like, just work through it. It's it's one of the things that the church has done from from jump. I mean, they just back in the Old Testament, they just had systems of working through the psalms regularly. In the Middle mm. Ages, the monks would pray the psalms every week, all 150 psalms. Wow. Every week. Wow. 150 psalms every week. Every week. Yep. All, and they made all, good beer. And they made good beer. That's not an accident. Um, the um, but they they um, but the song like you start praying and singing the psalms and you will find yourself praying and singing things you never yeah. sung or prayed before. Mm -hmm. um, the the psalms have enemies. 
the psalmist has enemies and he's asking God to, to destroy them. He's asking God to defend him. He's asking God um, uh, to protect him. He's asking, um, he's asking God, where are you? I'm getting chased by these enemies. Mm-hmm. Um, the church is not used to fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and no wonder. We've been singing, you know, Jesus, I love you. I just want to love you. I just love you. I just love you. Repeat. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, and it, it's like Jesus is my boyfriend songs is not setting anybody up to fight. Yeah. And then when somebody walks into the room and says, hey, let's take those. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's take them. And mm-hmm. they're like, whoa, dude, like, no. relax. Just love. Love, man. <laughs> um, they're not even used to it. But like, I mean, just start with the Psalms. The, the Psalms are like. Are like steak and potatoes yeah. for Christians. They they they're like the they, they're spiritual workout food, um, and um, but then it's not just fighting. I mean, there's there's enemies. There's fighting. There's also like I mean, you're talking about you know going through hard times, grief, um, grief. Uh-huh. I mean, the Psalms put words to your grief that mm. you know modern modern praise songs yeah. is no good. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, and, and you know people like kind of kind of know this. I mean. Yeah, they do. You, you know, you go to a wedding or a funeral, mm. and people want a psalm read. Yeah, they want you know, even if they only know three, like I want Psalm twenty three read. Yeah, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, it's yeah. funny about um, that. We were talking about nine eleven earlier, yeah, we? Yeah, and um, that's exactly what they were singing. Some beautiful no, psalms no, no, from that. Nobody wants Hillsong. You know, yeah, no, yeah. No, you know when yeah. when it's when it comes, and if you do, you need to smack yourself. Yeah, I mean, what's wrong with you people, right? <laughs> yeah, when, when, yeah. when it's when it comes to nine eleven, when it right. comes to like you lose a child, right? It comes, you know, your 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 spouse has cancer, uh-huh. um, you know, some mm-hmm. difficulty. I mean, the Psalms are real. Yeah, the Psalms are raw. Yeah, yeah, and and like David went through it, mm-hmm. and the other and the other authors of the Psalms, they went through it. God, and you know, back to like what is God doing with David? I mean, taking him through all these hard things, so he could write these songs, yeah, yeah. and prayers for us, for us, yeah. for for the church. Um, and so, one, I would say one of the things that God is doing in when you sing the Psalms and when you um, uh, learn to sing the Psalms is He's shaping you. That's right. You know, He's taking all this trials, all this. You know, raw realness in 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 the text, and it's actually shaping you and how you think. I mean, I remember before I came to Moscow how I thought about God, how I thought about the world, how I thought about, and then I remember singing psalms over twenty years right, now, right? And I think very differently. Um, I think um, I, I'm I'm more prepared for trials. I'm more prepared prepared for the hard times. I'm more prepared for um, the battles that God has before us in these next twenty years that are ahead of us. Mm. Um, you know, so God, like he shapes you in the Psalms. He shapes you in the singing of these Psalms. And so um, as opposed to you being shaped by Hillsong, mm-hmm. as opposed to you being shaped by, uh, you know, the three chord uh, uh, worship music out there. And it, and it does look at it. Look at our world. Look at our culture. Mm-hmm. Look at our church. They've been shaped by CCM worship music for 40 years right. now. Yeah. And it's not looking good. You know, there's something else to this, too. I remember being here for three years, going back to an, a church that I was at. And I remember I wasn't really enjoying the Psalms. It wasn't my type of music. It wasn't the music that I'm, it's in my soul. I just don't sing it naturally. And I remember going to this church, so happy to go back to a worship service where I knew the songs and I could almost close my eyes and act like I wanted, it was a reform, but act like I wanted to lift my hands. Yeah. And I remember getting ready for that moment, like I'm about to have a really good meal. And I got there and I was like, um, oh, this is soft. <laughs> this is soft. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, and I remember because you've been shaped. I didn't even know how much it was yeah, shaping me. Getting shaped. I didn't yeah. know that uh-huh. the, yeah. even though it was kind of in this classical form and it was, it was, it had a masculine feel to it. And the other music, even though it was even good music that had good tones, musical notes to it, the, the design of it was built around a soft culture. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how much, how soft I was. Mm. And I'm not even enjoying the f- flavor right. of what I'm getting. And right. God is crafting me. And I get there and I'm like, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. I don't like this at all. I wanted right. to leave. Oh. And, be, and then I heard a good sermon and the sermon was nothing like what the singing was. Right. Right. And I'm like, wait, how is this high up here? Right. And then down here, it's trying, but it's nowhere close. Right. It was just kitty wampus. And I remember right. hungry. I came back and I was like, I have to figure out, even against my own taste and sensibilities, how to have psalms inside of me so that they come out at moment, just instantly, just like 
uh, another uh, lyric to a song would come out yeah. because we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow on the show. I think we're coming to a time right now, particularly watching what's happening with our economy and other things that are about to take place in America. I think we are in a very interesting place and you better know you some Jesus. Because yep. if you haven't yep. been leaning on yep. him and trusting him, you're going to yep. either fall or you're going to stand. That's the only two options we're about to uh-huh. be in front of. And if you don't know you some Psalms and these these troubled times that are coming, you are not going to be held together. Right. You're going to have to have something. You cannot lean on a Tupac song or a, a Beyonce's track to get you through the day. Only it's not going to work. Judge me now. You know, it's not. Yeah, that's that's not going to it's <laughs> not going to cut it right. for what we're about to face. You better have something that stirs your soul to worship God right. past those troubles and trials. Back to your original question, Knox, I would say, too, I, I said, you know, beer and wine is this is dangerous, but yeah. they're also gifts of God. Um, and that's one of the things that you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're committed to um, recovering and receiving the gifts of God. In Psalm 104, for example, it says, he causes the grass to grow for the cattle, the herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man mm. and oil to make his face shine and bread, which strengthens man's heart. Oh, man. Um, Oh, that just hit me differently. God says that he gave wine to make the heart of man glad. Mm. And I think we can slide right in their beer as well. Yeah. It's, it's a similar kind of um, gift. And and the Bible is absolutely clear. All drunkenness is out. Yeah. That's right. No, yeah. no drunkenness at all. Yeah. The, 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 the Lord says that um, uh, drunken, you know, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. Um, but the gift of wine, the gift of beer is to make our hearts glad. That's Psalm 104. And and it's and so there's this good gift that gives you joy, mm. and you and you have to be thoughtful. It, it's also dangerous, mm. and I think that that's a metaphor for I think basically what you're talking about. If we're if we're going into hard times, if we're going, I mean, we're going to war. Yeah. Um, then we need war songs. Yeah. And war songs are realistic about the enemies we face, the challenges we face, the pains that mm-hmm. we face, the the difficulties and hardships we face. And at the same time, you know, all those psalms, almost all of them, have that turn. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. All, all, there's only one of them that doesn't, uh-huh. which is encouraging for the every once in a while when you just don't pull out of it that night. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning you, you do. Come on, yeah, 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 you got to right. wake up next morning. Right. And be like, so it's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. But but you know, 149 of them pull out, mm-hmm. and um, and they and they and it's you know it's hard. God, where are you? I'm crying out to you. Yeah. My enemies are chasing me. Why are you not listening to mm-hmm. me? It's going bad. It's going terrible. They're mocking me. They're saying, "Where is your God?" Yeah. And then there's a turn, and it's usually something like, "The Lord heard my prayers, mm. and He answered me out of His temple. Mm. The Lord heard my prayers, and I will praise Him." Um, you know, God is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. Um, it's that turn, though. It's that joy in the midst of the hardship. Yeah, mm-hmm. that we want to go for. I mean, that's why we. That's why we. You know, we, we call it fight, laugh, feast. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, we, we we know that we've got fighting to do. We want to fight like Christians. We want to fight like believers with joy in our hearts, um, and and gladness with with laughter and feasting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's why we do beer and so, songs. So war food and war drink. Yes, war food, war drink, war songs mm. all Amen. together Amen. because Amen. that's that's what we want. And, and and it's and it's the kind of thing that strengthens your heart, like it says, bread that strengthens a man's heart, mm-hmm. wine that makes the heart of man glad. Mm. Um, we want that kind of strength in our souls, uh, in our bodies, in our souls as we face the challenges that God has for us. That's good stuff. Hi, I'm Robert Borton, CEO of Classical Conversations, the world's largest classical Christian homeschooling community. I'm launching a new podcast, Refining Rhetoric. If you like cross politics or just listen to hear what crazy stuff they're saying today, you will enjoy Refining Rhetoric. You can find us on your favorite podcast platform. I practice the 15 tools of learning by interviewing great guests, looking at current events, and talking about cryptocurrency. Meet Big Ed. He has a tax-funded taste for children. Big Ed knows that the best grooming starts early. He has a plan for your preschoolers, a plan to gender confuse your grade schoolers. But if you think his grooming stops there, you have not been paying attention. Big Ed wants to liberate your daughters from old fashioned ideas like, well, you already know. Big Ed has dorm rooms ready for you in prison buildings of learning and professors standing by dedicated to grooming young adults in doubt and unbelief. After all, he is the gatekeeper of this brave new world. And if you want a job, 
you'll need to pay him with years of your life for a permission slip. Yeah, whatever. You think David paid Goliath for a certificate in giant management before those two squared off? Did Luther major in theses? Was George Washington summa cum laude in empire repellents? while Jefferson focused on ag with a minor in declarations. When the world needs saving, meaningful vocations abound for those who are truly prepared. And the truth is, despite Marxist advances, this is still America and Big Ed is still a voluntary opt-in. So don't. Not at any level. Not preschool, not middle school, not college. It isn't complicated. When Big Ed offers you free candy, Stay away. You'll thank us later. We know it's crazy, but run with us here. Men and women were created in the image of God. You don't need a government certificate of faux learning for personal validation or permission to work. You were born with divine permission to pursue knowledge and understanding, truth, goodness, and beauty. And at New St. Andrews College, we are committed to helping students do just that to their fullest potential. In an age dominated by chaos when learning is on a choke leash controlled by Big Ed and his many strange friends, ours is an education for outlaws, an education for men and women committed to building a beautiful and free society in the ruins of the Western world. When thinking is outlawed, only outlaws will think. Yes, Big Ed hates what we do, but his hatred brings us joy. New St. Andrews College liberal arts for outlaws, mind, body, and soul. Home, it's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy.